Bar here on YouTube. Welcome to Walter's Railroad Corner. You can tell by the stuff on the wall here, I might be a little bit railroad related. From time to time, I think I'll tell you a story or two. Maybe just talk a little bit. shop down here organizing stuff. Now that my train horns on the wall made a bracket to hold them up there. I can snatch them down and go whenever I want. Here's a little something you might find interesting. What is it my friends? I can tell you it's related to a piece of rolling stock on the railroad. More than one type of rolling stock, actually. I'll give you a hint. You see them on cabooses and locomotives. What is it? It's made out of plastic. The original ones were metal. This one's brand new, never been used. It's ridged, cone-shaped, three-quarter inch pipe threads on this end. And it's about four and a half, five inches long. What is it? I'll let some of you guess for a while before I tell you what it is. And while we're talking railroad corner, what is this? You hold it like this, stick it in a slot, the reverser handle. Closest thing you come to a key on the locomotive. You can't move a locomotive without one. <clears throat> anyway, we might just glance at my wall a little bit some of the things I hung up there today. I picked that picture up at an auction somewhere. The American Freedom Train. By Centennial Journey. 1975-1976. Forty-four, forty-nine. Locomotive number. Why does that ring a bell? Got a few railroad-related items on the wall. Got some hand lanterns. I found that lens. It's a big lens. Near a crossing where it fell off a signal light at a crossing or the signal maintainer probably discarded it or fell off his truck but I thought it was neat I picked it up and brought it home those are self-explanatory there's my pressure gauge from my horns I've shared my picture of him and yours with you before shared my packing hook with you. I have one more item to ask you what it is. But anyway, you're looking at Walter's Railroad Corner. This 
mystery item. Oh, 15, 16 inches long. Metal has a hook on the end of it, which is very sharp. A carman would use these in many, uh, in one of his more important tasks. And it was often used in conjunction with his packing iron. He had to use a packing iron to take the pads out of the friction bearing truck and to put them back. But you couldn't get the brass the bearing out of the off the journal without first removing the pads. And that's where this thing came into play. When you got that truck side jacked up off of the bearing, the journal is in there, the axle of the journal. Well, you need to inspect that thing. And only a fool would stick his hand in there on top of that journal. Knowing if that jack fell, you wouldn't have a hand anymore. You're talking about Tons and tons of railroad car going to fall right on your hand when that jack comes down. That's what this was for, for inspecting a journal. Most journals are 10, 12, between 10 and 12 inches long. So they don't need to be any longer than this. But what you would do, see if I can find a piece of metal. Let's say this paint can is a journal. The brass, the bearing, fits right on top of there. Once you got the bearing off, this is called a scratch hook. You reach up inside there and feel the top of the journal with that scratch hook. If it's smooth, no pits or scratches, It'll slide right along, but you'll feel every defect, bump, pit mark, and an axle with that little bitty scratch on it. It's not a mystery anymore what this is, it's a scratch on Of course, that ain't here big around enough to be a journal. Anyway, I'm kind of proud of a little train horn bracket. Just bolted some wood up on the wall. Screwed it to a joist coming out. Yeah. I stood in the wall and my horn right there. That's all I got for you on the railroad corner today, my friends. Appreciate you stopping by. Y'all have a good day.